Tonight, a Forsyth County family is figuring out what's next. Deputies say a man killed his infant son. Sloan McDaniel was just three months old. He died yesterday, just days after his father, Brandon McDaniel, took him to the hospital. Now, the 20-year-old is in jail without bond facing murder charges. Steve King spoke with the baby's two godmothers who say the little boy was pure joy. I'm sad. I'm sad. This is a hard time. But I'm also grateful for his life, so... We are focusing on that. This baby was born just over three months ago. On Monday, he was taken to Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center by his father. That day, deputies arrested that man, 20-year-old Brandon Scott McDaniel, for felony child abuse. On Thursday, the infant died from his injuries, and Brandon McDaniel was charged with first-degree murder. Investigators say the deadly abuse happened at the father's home on Forest Line Drive in Clemens. Sloan's godparents say they're trying to focus on celebrating the boy's life, as difficult as that may be. We are all still processing. Everyone is still in shock. Um, and we're just going to step back, realize that it's not in our hands anymore. For the family, we are all focused on celebrating Sloan's life and remembering all of the beautiful moments that we had with him, his smile and his giggle that he had just sort of found here recently. And Sloan's family absolutely adored him. Um, he was pure joy, pure joy. Just the chubbiest, sweetest, most beautiful boy. He was one of the happiest babies I've ever spent time around. I was pleased to know Sloan for the short three months that I did. Now they're trying to heal together. Um, it's just been really, really hard um, to realize the reality of the situation, but um, we have all just been able to cry together and to love together and to realize that, like, he's in a better place and he's not in pain, and that's what matters. That was Steve King reporting for us there. The suspect in this case, Brandon McDaniel, did go before a judge today. He's due back in court in early February. Okay, so you just heard this um, audio clip right there. And let me tell you that... Oh, sorry about that. Let me tell you, this is something that um, mainstream media did not put on full blast the way that they could have, but we already know why that is. So you can clearly look in this picture right here and see there's a very striking difference between the two images. Now, of course, you have the sperm donor, because that's all I can refer to him as, on the left. And on the right was the sperm donor's child. Now, we all know how this works here. We can clearly look at that baby and tell that that child is not fully what the sperm donor is. That means his mother definitely had a good amount of melanin to her. Now, I didn't find a picture of a of of the mother until I went over onto Tariq's page where I found out about this story and he had a picture of the mother with the sperm donor. I guess this was maybe prior to the son being born. It looked like it was some relationship pictures that they took with each other prior to that actually happening. I wonder if Lonnie Love has gotten a hold of this story. And I wonder if, if they'll talk about this on the show. But something tells me that they won't because this story is actually three days old. I actually am recording this on January 20th, 2020. This story was posted on January 17th, 2020. By the time you see it, it'll probably be sometime later on in the week. And I bet you by that time, Lonnie Love... And her anti-black man ass will have not talked about it yet on her platform or any of those other pro swirler channels will not talk about this. Had the roles been reversed, though, we all know they would have had all the vitriol in the world when it comes to something like this. But then again, they probably will talk about this, but find a way to thrust a black man in there somewhere because you know they are professionals at doing that but it is at the end of the day sad and unfortunate this story right here 
and the one involving the sperm donor for Rico Roundtree are almost parallel with each other. The only difference is that he killed his own biological son himself. He didn't take him to an environment and had him be killed by somebody else that wasn't biologically theirs. Unlike the sperm donor for Rika Roundtree, he brought her into an environment where she was killed by somebody else that was not biologically her mother. But either way, two melanated children are dead because of the involvement from what the quote unquote fathers did. Both demons and monsters at the same time. And none of them worthy to call themselves dad, let alone father. Now, they didn't specify in this particular case why he actually killed the child. But when I think about something like this, it, it immediately takes me back to or reminds me of stories I heard back in slave during slave times when you would have massa who would rape the slave woman. Sometimes she willingly went and had a child with this individual give birth. And then he would either put that child to work or he would kill it sometimes before the child was even born. Like this is what this reminds me of. They said the baby was only three months old. Barely like barely out of the womb. And he killed him. Like I said, we don't know what the reason is. But like I said, when it comes to stuff like this, they will kill just because the day ends with the letter Y. Now, I noticed that when they were talking and interviewing people, they only talked to the two godmothers who both happened to be palm colored women. That makes me wonder what type of environment the mother was around or in, because it seems to me like was she even near her family? Because they didn't interview anyone from her family. They interviewed people that probably was more closely related to him. But then again, she could have been that black friend where she was the only one there. If you get what I mean. Or she could have been the rebellious type and got away from her family. And maybe her family tried to tell her about this guy. But she didn't listen. They say he's only 20. 20. And his whole life is thrown away. Like I said, whenever they give, whenever they don't give you a bond for something like this, that means you, what you did was a serious crime. And there's a good chance that they are going to try to find you guilty and throw you behind bars for the rest of your life. That's the best thing that could have come out of this case is them not giving him a bond. Because they be giving out bonds left and right for stuff like this all the time. But apparently where he's at, they got it right. He's going to deserve everything he gets. And I hope the people on the inside got wind of what he did. Because they do not take kindly to people who harm children. And this man did the worst thing he could do to a child. And that's murder a child. His own child at that. A child he helped bring into the world, he took out of it. Just as fast as it took him to come in. Think about it. Pregnant for nine months. Killed after being fresh out of the womb for three. The child didn't stand the chance. But it makes me also wonder where was the mother at when all of this was going on? Was there abuse happening with this child that people didn't know about? Or was this just a spur of the moment type thing? And he just decided to take the child out in one fell swoop. Like these are questions that need to be asked because when it came to Rika Roundtree, she was being tortured and abused for over a year before she finally was taken out by that. I don't even want to say her name. I, I can't even bring myself to call her the B word at this moment. But I feel absolutely nothing. And I do mean nothing for the sperm donor in this story. Just like I feel nothing for the sperm donor in the previous story. I damn near don't feel anything for the mother. But I would like to know where her head is at. Because like I said, they didn't interview her. And I can understand why they did. And she's probably traumatized by what's going on right now. 
But another day in the establishment when it comes to stuff such as these. But they claim we're the bad guys. Like I said, we have some people that are rough around the edges. And that sperm donor for Rika Roundtree is definitely one of them. But don't act like we are the only ones. That's all I'm saying. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and have your notifications turned on. And I will talk to you in the next one.